All right, 1.7 through 1.8 notes. We're going to be talking about um, expo exponential functions and logarithmic functions. So for this course, um, we're not going to go into great details about you know how to solve exponential and logarithmic functions. It's more that I want to give you and uh, a little overview, a little reminder of what these functions are all about because they come up so much in real life. Um, so an exponential growth or decay function is a function that grows or shrinks at a constant percent growth rate. And the equation can be written in the form f of x equals a parentheses 1 plus r parentheses to the x power or just f of x equals a b to the x where b is equal to 1 plus r for growth or positive r, and b equals 1 minus r for decay or negative r. So for example, if we have a population um, is 14,000 organisms initially, and it grows 7.1% each year, we want to write um, out what p is as a function, where it represents population, and t is the number of years of growth. And we're going to use the exponential model, a p equals a times b to the t power. So the a is your initial starting value, so 14,000. And then um, you want to write 7.1% um, as 0 0.071. And then remember your b would be 1 plus that. So it's going to be times 1.0. 7, 1, all to the t power. So just keep in mind that b is equal to uh, 1 plus r, where r is your rate for growth and then 1 minus for decay. The fox population in a certain region has an annual growth rate of 9% per year. It is estimated that the population in year 2000 was 8,500. Find a function that models the population two years after 2000, zero, t for equals 0 for 2000, so the year 2000 they mean, and put your answer as p of t equals. So we started off with 8500, so your initial amount goes first. It's going up by 9%, so 9% is 0.09, it's going to be 1.09, and we're going to add 1 to it for growth to the t power. And we're going to use this to estimate what it'll be in 2008. So we're going to do p of 8, not 2008, because it's only 8 years after. So the time passed is only 8 years. So it's 8,500 times 1.09 to the 8th power. And that's about 16,936. So just plug in there, plug it in your calculator, and you should come up with the same amount. So a vehicle was bought for $25,000, and it depreciates a constant rate of 4%. So this one is going down, so we're going to have to use subtraction. Determine the approximate value of the vehicle 14 years after purchase. So we should um, come up with a, a function, I'll call it P of T. The initial value of the car was $25,000. Now we're going to do 1 minus 0.04 because it's decaying this time, decaying, depreciating. So our function is 25,000 times 0.96 to the t. Alright, so now if we plug in 14 to our model, we get 0.96 to the 14th power times 25,000. And that's about $14,116.83 is what your car is worth in 14 years, which isn't bad. It must be a pretty good car because most of them depreciate much faster than that. Uh, APR, you've probably heard of that if you've ever owned a credit card. Um, your annual percentage rate. Um, formula is given there. Okay, 
and actually that is the I should say yield not rate because the annual percentage yield we're going to use that in the uh, end of the problem it says um, well I don't want to scroll down too much well I guess we can in part C it asks for the annual percentage yield so the formula up above is what we're going to use for that all right, so a bank features a savings account that has an annual percentage rate, APR, of R equals 2.8% with interest compounded quarterly. Adriana deposits 3500 into the account. The account balance can be modeled by the exponential formula A of T equals A, parentheses 1 plus R over K, parentheses to the power KT, where A is account value after T years little a is the principal starting amount, r is the annual percentage rate, k is the number of times each year that the interest is compounded. So what we're looking at here really is just the compound interest formula. So a is the starting value and um, the starting value for the account is 3500. The rate is, you want it, they want it in decimal form, so 0 0.028 and K is 4 because it's compounded quarterly that's 4 times a year. So how much will she have in 10 years? Well let's put this all together. Our A of T is equal to 3500 times 1 plus 0 0.028 over 4 to the 4T. Now for 10 years we're just going to put 10 in for T So that'll be 4 times 10, which is 40. And uh, if you work this out, it's about uh, $4626.44. $4626.44. All right, and the last question is the APY. So that's the formula up above that we're using. You can look at your notes to see it. And it's going to be 1 plus. 0 0.028 over 4 to the 4th power minus 1. So the uh, APY is the actual or effective annual percentage rate which includes all compounding in the year. Um, so if we take put this in the calculator we should get 0 0.0283 which is 2.83%. Point eight three. Okay. Um, the number E or Euler's number it was named after a um, famous mathematician. I can't think of his first name, but his last name is Euler, and he um, is known for all sorts of things, but. Anyway, the, the number E is approximately 2.7182 and 1828459.04. This number never terminates and never repeats, so it is an irrational number. Um, but it's kind of like pi, and uh, you know, pi was discovered from circles. Uh, people realized that there was a, re a relationship between the diameter and radius of a circle, and that relationship was pi, that ratio was pi. Um, so E came about in a similar manner, but not with circles. Um, it's a little bit more complex, but anyway, mathematicians noticed that this number kept coming up. So they gave it a name, and um, we have ways of finding it and getting more and more digits. So if we look at continuous growth, it can be calculated with a formula f of t equals a e to the rt. So that's one example of where it comes up is in continuous growth. And A is the starting amount and R is the continuous growth rate. So very similar to what we've been doing. In 5A, we're asked to, um, or we're, we see this problem says, a population of bacteria is growing according to the equation P of T equals 400E to the 0.05T. 
Estimate when the population will exceed 474. All right, so um, setting it up, it would be 474 equals 400 e to the 0.05 t. It wants to know when this population is going to be 474, so you're putting 474 in for p of t. Now you can use some algebra techniques to solve this, but we're going to go ahead and uh, solve it with our calculator. Okay, so on your calculators, you are going to um, get a graph like this. So you want to go to y equals, and you can just hit clear if you've got some stuff there. And in y1, you want to put 474, and in y2, it's going to be 400 e to the 0.05x. Your e is just second ln. So your ln button um, is two up from the on button. And then go to your window, because your standard window isn't going to show it, and change your uh, values like you see here. I didn't do anything with x, but go down to y max and make that 600 and y scale 25. That's all you need to change, just y max and y scale, and then hit graph. And we can see that the two, li the two intersect um, you know, right here somewhere. So if we do our second trace, you know the calc menu again. We want to use 5 for intersect and it asks for the first curve so we'll click enter and the second curve is the red one. Hit enter again and it tells us the intersection is when x um, or in our case t is equal to oh, I need to minimize this again not quite what I was going for. <laughs> Let me straighten that out. There, that's better. Uh, looks like 3.39. So that's how you can use your calculator to solve it. There are um, algebraic ways um, and we'll look at that a little bit in the next problem. Oh, by the way, when you're putting in your, uh, your function, um, for any variable in the calculator, just use this button right here. Um, I hope you can see where I'm hovering over. It says X, T, theta, and N. And that, that, that just covers all of your different variables, but on the calculator, they just appear as X's. All right, um, B. This one is a little tricky, but bear with me. It says the doubling period of a bacterial population is, is 20 minutes. At time t equals 80 minutes, that bacterial population was 60,000. Um, so at the beginning, we were given a um, exponential function. We were given two different ones, uh, a times b to the t and a times r plus 1 to the t, and since we don't know what r is, we're going to use just a b to the t. Since we don't know what r is, so we're going to stick with that one. Um, and we don't know what the initial value is either. The doubling, We know what the doubling period is and how much there was there after 80 minutes. So we're going to play with that information to see if we can figure out what the um, function is for what's going on. So we're going to take information that's given and find a function. Um, so we know that after 20 minutes, or the, you know, it doubles. So whatever it was before, now we have twice as much. So P of 20 equals 2A. And now this is probably the, the hardest part of it. But, um, let's see here, uh, P of T is going to be A times 2 to the T over 20. So let me 
explain what this is, what's going on here. This is because we know that, so let's say p, because um, p of 20 is 2a, right? We have, we're okay with that. Um, another way to write this would be I can make an exponent, uh, so I'm going to write it as a times 2. And with that 2, I can write 20 over 20 because 20 over 20 is just 1. So it's just a little math trick. Um, which is still the same as 2a. So if I just replace um, the 20 with t, p of t, then I get a times 2 to the t over 20. Okay, so that's how we come up with that. I don't expect you guys to, you know, come up with your own stuff like that. Uh, maybe you could do another problem similar to this, but this is as difficult as it's going to get. All right, and um, we have that other bit of information that we can use. We know that at, when t is 80, so p of 80, the bacterial population was 60,000. All right, so that means that 60,000 must equal a times 2 to the 80 over 20. And of course 80 over 20 is 4. So 2 to the 4th power. And if we divide both sides by 2 to the 4th, we end up getting that A is 3750. 3, well that's wonderful because that gives us our starting amount. <coughs> Um, and that's what we wanted here. The second question is find the, the size of the bacteria population after five hours. So B, this, this stuff here is all A. Um, B, we're trying to find P of five. Five hours though. Um, so we wouldn't actually put five in here we'd want to do, remember it's in minutes, so there's 60 minutes in an hour, so this is actually P of 6, no, 3, you got to multiply here, right? Uh, 60 times 5 is going to be 3,000. Nope, 300, my bad. P of 300 is what we're actually trying to find. So you got to be careful with that because saying 5 hours here, but T's in minutes. Alright, so it's 3750 times 2 to the 300 divided by 20. And that's just something we can simply put in our calculator and we get this really huge number 122,880,000 what is this bacteria yeah bacteria after five hours all right logarithms 1.8 Just going to quickly go through a few log rules and stuff just so that we um, get a little more comfortable dealing with them. So logs are just um, really another way of writing exponential functions. Um, but because they come up so much, like we give them their own name. Because um, really it's, an ex it's the inverse of an exponential function. Um, so for example, we have adding. Um, 
but because we're adding negative numbers so many times, we came up with subtraction as another function. Um, and we have multiplication that we use a lot, but sometimes um, we're multiplying by fractions, so that's really division. It's the same idea. We, we have exponential functions, um, but sometimes we need their inverse, and since that happens so often, okay, we're calling the inverse the log function. So if you have b to the a power equals c, that's the same as log base b of c equals a. So you see that the base stays the same, and then basically the a and the c get swapped around. That's how I remember how to do them. Some properties of logs that are good to know are that if you have log base b of b to anything, it's equal to just that power. Vice versa, if you have b to the log b of something, it's equal to that something. ln b to the x, um, you can take that x and bring it down in front, so it's x ln of b. Log base 10 is just log, and log base e is just ln. So we want to write these exponential equations as logarithmic, logarithmic equations. So my base is 3, so it's going to be log base 3. And I'm going to switch the x and the 15, so it's going to be 15 equals x. This one, my base is 12, so log base 12 um, of 1 over 144 equals negative 2. So again, you want to switch the other two numbers that aren't the base. And this one's log base 7 of 4 equals x. Using the properties, we can simplify. Log base 5 of 5 to the third power is just 3. Log base 4 of 16 is the same as log base 4 of 4 squared. So this is just 2. 12 to the log base 12 cancel out, and you're left with just y here. ln of e is 1. ln of e squared would be 2. And log base 10 of x squared is just going to be x squared because log is log base 10. So the log base 10 and the 10 cancel out. And a couple of examples where we're going to solve. Um, 2 to what power is 32? Well, this one we can do without anything special. That's just 5 because 2 to the 5th power is 32. But the second one we're going to use ln for. We take the ln of both sides um, because this one we can't just, you know, we can't guess what 7 to the what power is 4. It's too difficult. Um, and it's not going to be a whole number or even a rational number. And then we can bring our x down in front. That comes down. So we have x ln of 7 equals ln of 4 and then divide by ln of 7. So we get x is equal to ln of 4 over ln of 7. Now you can, you know, give an estimation for that if you want, but this is the exact answer. And c, again I'm going to take the ln of both sides. And what's going to happen over on the left is ln of e actually cancels out and you just get 5x equals ln of 15. And then you divide by 5, so it's ln of 15 over 5. Now you might be tempted to divide 5 and 15, but you can't do that because it's attached to that ln. You need to take the ln of, of 15 first before you divide. And that's it. So just a little, little overview of those functions. They will come up in the class. Um, so I just wanted you to be a little bit more comfortable with them.